Welcome to the School of Chemistry here at Newcastle University. We recently overhauled actually our research areas and the organization of research uh, here in the school. And we now have formed three different areas. Uh, the one is synthesis, uh, spectroscopy and, uh, and substances. The second is uh, nano area and materials. And the third one is medicinal and biochemistry. Facilities at uh, Newcastle University in chemistry are very good. Uh, we have actually a large number of uh, lecture theatres, of seminar rooms, uh, but also the labs are, are really nicely equipped labs. They were recently refurbished. Uh, we have a uh, really up-to-date uh, uh, NMR lab with three big machines for NMR. We have very sophisticated X-ray equipment and uh, a special area in the nano uh, chemistry uh, is the use of scanning probe microscopes like uh, uh, atomic force microscopy and scanning tunneling microscopy. My research here is based in the chemical nanoscience labs. So what that really means is we're looking at ways of making new materials on the nano scale. And in particular for myself, I'm interested in using biomolecules and especially DNA. Um, so DNA has got heaps and heaps of unique properties. It's a stable biomolecule. It can be easily functionalized and it's got a very um, high aspect ratio. So therefore it's long and thin. We've been looking at ways over the last few years within the Chem Nano Labs at how to impart electrical conductance onto DNA and making a whole range of wires, nanowires, which range from two to five nanometers in width and can be many microns long. Our laboratory is based in the Northern Institute for Cancer Research and um, we are all working as a team here in, in the School of Chemistry to discover new treatments for patients who suffer from cancer. One particular interest of, of ours is to target DNA repair enzymes, which are enzymes able to recognize the damage we have caused by a conventional therapy, a chemotherapy agent, radiotherapy. And because patients have these enzymes, uh, these enzymes are able to repair the, the, the damage we have tried to cause to the DNA of the cancer cell. And because of that, patients suffer from resistance and perhaps don't respond to the therapy as we would like. What's unique about the work that we do in our lab is that we can take a project from a very early idea through to a drug that we can use to treat cancer patients. And two drugs that are in, in the clinic at the moment uh, being tested have come from work that was done at Newcastle University. In our own lab at the moment, we're working on disrupting the interaction between two proteins, one called P53, the other called MDM2. And by disrupting this interaction, we can kill cancer cells in a targeted way and without the side effects that you normally see with cancer's treatments. We're using chemistry to convert sunlight into electricity or fuel. And the devices that we make are very different from the silicon panels that you're used to seeing on rooftops. So in, with silicon devices, uh, the material, the semiconductor, uh, absorbs the light and transports the charge. In our devices, it's a little bit more complicated. We, our semiconductors are transparent to transport the charge, but we use the dye instead to absorb the light, and then a redox shuttle to transport the, other, the opposite charges. Uh, so it's a little bit like an electrochemical device, like a battery. So I look at the um, atomic makeup of material, um, determining exactly where all the atoms are inside a, a crystal structure, particularly focusing on the um, sort of extreme condition side of things, so seeing how materials react when you perturb them from the normal state of affairs. To look at materials under extreme conditions, you obviously need to be able to create those extreme conditions. And at Newcastle, we're in a unique position in that we have world-leading instrumentation. So the instrument that's over my shoulder can actually cool materials down to two Kelvin. So that's just two degrees above the coldest temperature that's possible to get to. The only way you can do that is with bespoke equipment here. Spectroscopy uses light to study the nature of molecules and materials. In my particular case, the light that I use happens to be microwave radiation. So two very important themes in my current research are the development of new instruments which are used for chemical analysis and also the study of plasma, a very hot and energised environment in which molecules form. Of course plasma is the kind of matter that you find in stars and it's also very important in industry in the manufacture of new materials. My labs have been very recently refurbished, so we have some great physical space to work in. Also, they have some very good staff in the mechanical and electronic workshops. 
And I think if you really want to do the best, most cutting edge science, you really need access to very good workshop staff as well. You can see in the instrument that we have that that is very important to me. This department is, is small enough to be friendly, but it's, it's also big enough to make an impact. The research I do, this instrument, it's, it's really the only one of its kind in the world. We can do things here that we wouldn't be able to do elsewhere. In respect of what I'm doing, we use the very latest technology that comes out of the telecommunications industry, and we can obtain microwave spectra, which contain more detail than anything that anybody can obtain anywhere else. We have about 500 undergraduate students and about 100 uh, postgraduate students uh, composed of a master degree program and a PhD program. I hope that you give an idea about uh, the really upfront uh, research that's being done in the School of Chemistry at Newcastle University.